back to the Game Day Squad Rugby League show. Josh and I, we're here to deliver another episode, episode two. We're still awaiting the footy season to begin, but after you guys watch this, you'll be keen for Vegas. As you can tell, I'm pretty keen. Got the training kit on, so keen for the boys. Josh, are you excited? So excited. I mean, you get to watch your boys nice and nice and early. Our yep. dog is out the way for the Bulldogs a bit, but it's okay. We're excited for just footy in general. Yeah. Um, should we go? Should we show them what we're going to go through? Yeah, let's this episode. Let's get into it. Let's tell everyone what we're going to go through in this episode. Yeah, so I think we're going to start with the strike spare misses in our in our game day squads, which are. Well, it's important to go through strike spare misses, right? Because it's going to be a segment every single week. So we'll go through the best player. It's like bowling, simple guys. You ever been bowling before? I, Josh, how do you actually go in bowling? Never. We've never been bowling. Together. I don't think I've lost before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on from that. Uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Anyways, then we're going to go into on the radar. So two players who we're looking out for, especially this week. Yeah. Um, and who the fans should look out for too, for their squads. And then we're going to go into uh, the transfer market, the player we want to pick up. Yeah. So transfer market's an important segment. Every week we'll be delving into the transfer market, who we think you should pick up, who we'd pick up if we were in your position. Um, we'll be answering questions and vice versa. But it's more for us and our team. This week, uh, we should do a squad reveal, right? We should, yeah. Yeah, we'll do a squad reveal. Um, and it's more about for who, who's in our squad, like we said, who we want to target in the in the transfer market. So it doesn't have to be the best player, right? Yeah. It's just a player that our squad really needs. I think it's important to say that because we haven't watched any footy yet in terms of the, the season starting, we, yeah. can't, we can't review anything. So this is why yeah. we're starting off with just a little breakdown and little uh, tips and tricks that we have for our squads. Yeah. Little tips and tricks we've got for our squads and what we think based off what we've seen in the trial matches, but we all know that's not everything in rugby league. Correct. Then from the back of that, we're going to go into our prediction for the week. Yep. And prediction for the week, we'll have a forfeit at the end. Can we tell them that? Yeah, you can, you can tell them that. All right. Well, we'll do a forfeit at the end. So we'll say, you know, uh, player X will score Z amount of yep. uh, points this week. And then, you know, we'll, it'll be a forfeit. You know, if Josh gets closer to the number, then then I lose and I've got to do something next week. Or, or a doggy jersey. Yeah, oh, look, that's a bit of a stretch. Gonna, Maybe if I lose 10 in a row. It's going to happen this it's year. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you you see me in blue. You see me in blue and white, only if there's a bit of red to it as well. So, yeah, I don't think I'll be in a dog's jersey. Yeah, fair no. enough. Fair enough. Or should we get straight into it or you want to get, cover anything? Yeah, I just want to let people know that we'll do, um, we'll do a surprise pack opening at some point as well. Yes. So you want to talking about the weekly packs as well if no one's yeah. logged on in a while yeah if you haven't logged on and you haven't made a team you gotta hurry up yeah you gotta <laughs> so, make your squad. your squad sorry but uh yeah you get a pack every week it could be any position on the field i think this week i have a center pack i think i've got two mids uh which my middle forward's That's pretty strong, strong so if yeah. i can strengthen it even more it'd be awesome yeah maybe get an rcg in there maybe uh, I could have a full Parramatta forward pack, which wouldn't be bad because it looks like based off the trial, they're carrying the Parramatta side. Their yeah. forwards are just unreal, which we'll get into. But yeah, make sure you jump onto game day squad. If you haven't filled out your team already, lockout is you know before the first game this Sunday. Yeah. And also this Sunday, the Vegas games, they run through all the way till the end of round one. So don't forget this Sunday, even though there are only two games of rugby league being played, they are the start of round one and you won't be able to change those players in your squad until the end of round one, which is the following week. So a bit confusing for the start of the season, but don't be confused. Just sit back and watch the Roosters get the win. And it's a, it's a hopefully long round, eh? It's a long round. It, but it is exciting. a long round, but yeah, it's exciting. I guess everyone will be talking about Vegas and how it went, you know, at work on Monday and Tuesday, and you'll be reviewing the, the first two games. And then before you know it, yeah. like a couple of sleeps and, you know, you've got a Thursday night game. Correct. Um, Not so yeah, wrong. I can't complain. Yeah, same here. Same here. All right. Well, well let's, let's get, 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 yeah, let's let's get, get straight into, into it. it. Uh, we'll start with our strikes first. Do you want to kick us off with the strike? Yeah, so strike spare misses, like we explained before, just like when you go bowling, right? Strike's ideal. You want to hit a strike every time. Spare's still great, but it's not It's not the best. It's not a strike. Exactly. It's not a strike. And misses, look, no one wants to miss. You know, some people still play with the bumpers up, but we won't, we won't get into that. <laughs> um, I'll start with my my strike. Uh, I, I, I put down a couple of key stats as well. That way I could go through it. And so we're doing strike spare misses based off our squad, not just players in general. So my strike this week was Jermaine Hopgood. And I think he'll be a strike. Well, I hope he'll be a strike every week for the Parramatta Eels. Um, if he's not in your squad, I'm not sure why he isn't. I just feel like he just makes so many meters, always like, tackle break, offload, always there. Um, and also his tackling efficiency is quite up there. Yeah. Um, 
So I think this season probably average around the 90% mark, yeah, which would be pretty pretty stock standard for him. Um, like just running through some of his stats, he ran for 226 meters. He scored a try, made 31 tackles, only missed two. I think three offloads and three tackle breaks in there as well. So it's pretty solid. I'm going to have him in my squad week in, week out, unless he gets injured. Or I, I expect he'll be picked for Queensland, but you know that'll happen later on. Yeah, and for owner, for people with their squads, it's a no-brainer because last year he pretty much – he did come from nowhere, signing from Penrith. But now this this year, everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows Hopkins. Yeah. And everyone knows what he can do in the, middle, right. in the middle of the park. And the minutes he plays is incredible. It's crazy because Parra knew what he was capable of. Parra didn't want to lose him, but he wasn't going to start anyway. So it's like, oh, wow. But then you're right. He kind of bursts on the scene for everyone else. And he's changed the way the Parramatta play, I, I feel, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, he's, he's my strike for the week. Yeah, I feel like he's a player that could just change the game really quick if it's a – offload, late offload, and he don't expect it, or he tackle yeah. break. Well, for those who watch the game, I, I wonder, did you see, like, his pace? How quick Yeah, was he? I didn't know it was I, him. I didn't know, yeah. I probably thought it was, like, I, a... I was like, oh, is, is that, a, like, a, a slightly larger Clint Gutherson? I was just... So he's, to top it off, he's been training hard on the off-season. Oh, so. for sure. It looks I mean, like he's slimmed down and still got the impact, like, the physical impact. So, yeah, so that's scary, a good, man. That, that, a good striker, a strike he could hold for the season. a strike all day. Season. That bowling ball will wood. roll down the alley. <laughs> Well, I'll go to my strike uh, yep. from a, a a squad that played good, the Warriors. We're going to Sean Johnson. Jeez. Uh, he, it, I, I, I don't Marshall. have to say that. Yeah, I, I think he's in for a big season. I've said it before to you, Norman. Yeah. Um, four from four goals, you know, useful for your squad. Kicking goals is a benefit. Especially when you don't miss. That's right. And then he got, he got a try assist. He got a line break, a line break assist. And three tackle breaks. No, and to add to that, no errors, which is incredible. No errors from a half who doesn't miss their goals. It's look, yeah, it's it, it sets up a, a good start to the week for me if he does play well. But like I said, the experience of Sean Johnson and the introduction of players into that squad that help him out, like he got Kirk Capewell on his edge, is oh, I can incredible. see him, I can see him putting Capewell through so many holes this year, and even like. I'm sure he'll link up with RTS at some stage. It, oh, you'd like, think so. You'd, yeah. It, yeah. Give it a couple of weeks if it doesn't happen early. But yeah, you'll see a sure. fair few try assists yeah. to Roger from Sean, surely. Yeah, for, like, for him being a strike for me, I see him playing consistent every week, which would have to be for the Warriors to be in that top eight. He'd have to play pretty consistent. And yeah. off the back of the trial games, uh, he looks in good nick and a player that's going to be in my squad all season. Okay. I don't blame you at all. Uh, I'll jump into my spare. Now, my spare this week is another Parramatta Eels player. I'll give you – he's in my squad. I'll give you one chance to guess who it is. Um, oh, is it uh, Dylan Brown? No, nah, it's his buddy. It's his half partner. It's oh. Mitchell Moses. Uh, I'm, I'm, Josh knows I'm huge, huge on Dil, Dylan Brown. So uh, I'm, I was considering – I was hoping to get him in my squad, let's yeah. be real. But I've, we'll do a team reveal uh, – squad reveal later. But I've – um. Yeah. I've got Munster, so, yeah. you know, can't, can't complain. Anyway, I've gone with Moses as my spare. Now, the reason why I'm going, I've watched Paris game quite closely because I'm not sure how they're going to go this year. Obviously, they missed the eight last year. Mm. We um, we got a lot of Paris fans around us now, immediate yeah. circle. Yeah. Very confident on, on how good they're going to go every year. And then last year kind of fell to pieces. But I'm, I'm interested to see how they go because the half pairing of Moses and Brown is really good. They've got a fantastic connection. We've yeah. touched on it before on our on our own yeah. um, Sports Shed page. Like, their connection is unreal. So, when Moses is on and he goal kicks and he's steering the team around the ship, uh, yeah, he's steering hit, the ship yeah. around. Sorry, he, you like points just come off the back of him, right? Sure. But I've got him as a spare because he missed seven tackles. Now that's yeah. going to cancel out a lot of your points. He had, I think, a f- I, had, I think he had three. I think he had a line break, a line break assist, and three tackle breaks. Yeah. But missing seven tackles gets rid of all those points he would have accumulated from those attacking stats. Yeah. And you can't have that. Like as a half, you can't, you can't be missing seven tackles yeah. um, in, a, in a game. Right. Yeah. And that's going to tarnish your squad if you have him in there, because then you're just relying on his goal kicking and he missed two kicks as well, which isn't the end of the world, but it's like, if you're not nailing all your kicks and you know, he only set up one try out of five and missed seven tackles. Like that's a loss of like, it's like 21 points. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. To add to that, like, if you have, two players like Mitch Moses and Dylan Brown who are very good in their own space and they both on the ball. It's hard for one player to, to outshine. Yeah, you're and, right. Um, we see it in many teams, many many uh, squads. But yeah, like Dylan Brown has been killing it. So it's like 
which way do you go? Which is which yeah. is why you've put him in spare, which makes sense. It does. And and Dylan Brown's always been a better defensive player than Moses since yeah. bursting onto the scene um a couple of years back. But and Moses, I know he's known for his long kicking game, but he, but his goal kicking and general ball playing ability is still sound. It's still yeah. enough to score to score points, but you can't miss seven tackles. No. So we'll see how he goes. I've got him in his I've got him in his spare. Yeah, so you've gone for the more conservative side where you might you probably have him as backup as your spare. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's on my bench, so yeah. he'll get he'll be getting points for for your GDS sides yeah. this year if he's on your bench. Yeah, correct. Um, but it's not like I want to replace him with another half yet. Yeah. So don't want to start him, but he's on the bench to score me points. We'll see how it goes round one, I mean, and we'll take it from there. Not a bad uh, backup. Oh, yeah. That's, he's the Blues uh, backup half. Yeah, that's right. So. And he's got your doggies in round one. So, you know, fingers yeah. crossed for a big performance. No, nah, mate. We'll keep him down. Anyway, it's been to my spare. Yeah. I'm going from the same club. I'm going RCG. Okay. Listen, I want to start him, but majority of his points came from a try. And we all know he's not going to score every week. No. So, uh, no offloads, which was, is a letdown. Steve, I, I was hoping he'd bring that into his game a bit more. Maybe just trial taking it easy, um, but didn't see it. I think he only had one tackle break, maybe two. You know, in the middle, you'd hope for a bit more. So, yeah. like, so he's a player where I'm like, I want to start him in my team, my squad, but I'm on the I'm on the border, which is why he's sitting in my spare, uh, and a hundred running meters, which is which is pretty good, which is pretty good. It's so pretty I'm good. Like, I'm thinking to myself, can he find that position in the squad? Well, you know, RCG is someone who can run over 100 meters every yeah, week and yeah. get the offloads, get the yeah. tackle breaks. But yeah, you're right. Majority of his points did come from the try. You take the try away, he's between miss and spare. That's right. So it's like a player I'm going to hold on to. I'm not going to sell him. Yeah. But maybe come into this round, I'm not going to start him. Okay. But yeah, into the misses. Into the misses, I will miss. And I was quite big on this guy, so not sure whatever. I, I'd love to hear, like like we said last week, we'd love to hear all your thoughts. Put everything in the comments mm. on the Discord. DM us personally if you want it at Sportshed TV. Um, but literally, you can put everything on, on the Game Day Squad channels um, and just yeah. ask us all, all your questions and we want to answer them and, and try to be of use. And we want you guys to roast us if, you, if you're against our opinions. So, um, yeah, it's free for all, really. Let us know your thoughts. I was big on this guy. His name is Leo Thompson from the Newcastle Knights. Yeah. I've got him in my squad. And I thought this year, I know it's just, like we said, it's just trials. We know. I was thinking he'd be getting a bit more minutes this year. Mm. Um, hopefully he can secure their starting role at prop. But I was just wasn't super impressed. Like he only took eight runs. Yeah. Like when you're a prop and you're like, okay, this is my pack. Like this is like, I want to leave my mark. I want to make my mark here. Like yeah. to only make eight runs. Missed three tackles, only one tackle break. Mm. Like he doesn't need to be breaking out of tackles every single time he runs the ball, but he's got to be making at least 12, 13 runs. Making an impact, yeah. Yeah, and you know, to miss that, like to miss three tackles without even making that many, I don't know. Especially they had a lot of defending to do against Melbourne. Yeah. So I thought he really could have, um, you know, helped guide the forward pack a bit more, but he, but he didn't. So, and I, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be too harsh, I could have put him in the spare category, but I was just so confident on him this season mm. in my squad. But I feel like someone like, you know, if you're going someone similar to him, like Uta Kamanu, I think he'll have more impact in the Tigers team than what Leo Thompson would, which was funny because I thought the reverse going into the trials. So yeah. he's my miss for this week only because I was so high on him being in my squad. No, that, that you backed it up really well there. But uh, into mine, I'm going for Zach Lomax. I think we're all excited to watch him for the Dragons in the trial match. And disclaimer, there isn't too much exciting things about the Dragons, right? Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but... It's fine. We've got to be honest do. with that. Yeah, we do. But I was excited to watch Lomax play. I was hoping he would get a shot in one of the matches at fullback. Same. And I think their fans did as well. They wanted to see it. And I was excited because I wanted it in my, my squad. And uh, yeah. as a goal kicker... As a goal kicker, a goal kicking a fullback yeah. in a team where only he will shine. He'll be one of three players that shine every yeah. week. And as a strong fullback, you'd, you'd see the meters come in, the tackle breaks, tackle breaks. Loads, and probably, in, yeah. So I, I was excited to see he was ready. I was ready to have him in my squad. Now I've just taken him out of my squad because. Well, he didn't do much, did he? Yeah, he didn't do much. And there's so many good, so many good uh, outside backs in the game right now. Yeah. And. Yeah, I was disappointed because I was so excited. That's that, and uh, that's why he's in my miss. Yeah. Do you have anything on his on his stats or did yeah, you have like, no, expected was, stats? He just – like, Did much. you expect yeah, much I, from him? Yeah, I – well, 
it started off with him. Want, I wanted him to play fullback. So okay, and uh, he didn't see much of the ball on that edge. To be honest, in, in a in a game where they they won convincingly against the um, Tigers. Tigers, so yeah. um, he's he's just a complete miss for me. Nothing against Zach Lomax in just a position he's playing at the Dragons. So you think if he's at fullback, he gets another fifteen points between tackle breaks, oh, offloads, yeah. most yeah, most yeah. definitely, yeah, gets okay. invo- gets involved. Might bag a try assist, he's yeah. a better chance of scoring. And with a try assist will come a line break assist in the position yeah. of fullback, the way yeah. he'd play the game, hitting he'd the prob- line. Yeah. yeah, he'd probably have more errors in his game, but at least he sees the ball, which is what you yeah. need, which is what you need for impact. Yeah, that's right. He's attacking I think his attacking stats will, would outdo a couple errors here and there. Yeah. And also I should mention having a player like Ben Hunt on the inside of him who's so dominant. Oh, gee, that helps. And he he loves to play the running game, Ben Hunt, as he's more of a running half. Um, we saw he scored two tries yeah. off just instinct. So it kind of like, ben, yeah. it doesn't benefit Zach Lomax no. in a way where Ben Hunt loves a short kick for the winger, which is gonna, probably going to cut out Zach Lomax, which I saw a bit. So yeah, so I'm, I'm sticking away from Lomax. Nothing against Lomax, it's just position he's playing yeah. at the Dragons. And on that, obviously we want to be covering a lot of uh, like fantasy stuff, but we want, we want to hear about your opinions too. What rugby league team you support, yeah. uh, why you support them, your favorite player. Yeah. your favorite you know fantasy relevant player and, and go through it because i mean lomax is a fan favorite for the dragons because he's one of the most you say he's probably the most consistent and like yeah, physically he's sure. actually a dominant player like he's strong oh, in the yeah. wrestle he's, sure. he's a competitor but i just feel like dragons fans who are watching like how badly do you want to see him a fullback because yeah. if i was a dragons fan I'd, I'd be scratching my head and like I'd be commenting on every social media, but I'd be yeah. doing everything I possibly can just to just to get it out there and build some sort of community to put him to fullback because we can see the impact and the points he will have and how that could impact yeah. his squad. Because it'd be um, a low ownership player. Like I don't think too many people would have him. Yeah, no. could be a real um, a yeah. real pod there. But yeah, you're right. There's just no room to have him in your squad Sh- if he's yeah. not going to be playing fullback. Should mention that there's not, nothing against Sloan. Sloan playing an amazing game. And it's just a, compared I, to the yeah, week before too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I believe Zach Lomax would have a bigger impact, especially if he's no, I agree. His size, the size of him. Yeah. And I feel like as a ball player, Zach Lomax could be pretty good. And maybe another club want to, you know, snap him up at, at a fullback role, but most likely yeah. it won't happen. I think everyone has their fullback. But yeah, that's just my opinion on that situation. But yeah, should we move on? Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Man, on, on I'm the radar. to move on. On the radar. Now, on the radar is someone, uh, well, it, it'll be a player or two that we'll keep an eye out on who we, we think will be able to improve our squad. So it's not someone necessarily that we feel like we can afford or we'll, we'll buy a pack in uh, in hope that we'll get them. It's just like, who are we keeping our eyes on and who are you guys keeping your eye on? So I've decided to come up with two players. Did you come up with two? Yeah, I got two as well. All right, awesome. Mine are on the radar for two very important reasons. First player, Latrell Mitchell. Mm. Bounce back year. Yeah. I'm cut. I'm a Roosters fan. I'm still cut that he left us. Sure, he hasn't won a comp, and I don't think he'll win a comp with the Rabbitohs. Am I a salty Roosters fan that he left? Maybe. Do I think he's a better left center than his fullback? Yes. <laughs> but also, he's got Jack Wyden at the club. He's, yeah. he's so used to copying a lot of flack. Um, you know, everyone's saying by all reports, he's actually trained much better in this preseason. And I think this is, and I don't want, you know, everyone says, I'll make or break you about certain players. Latrell doesn't need to make or break anything. Yeah. He's already broken opposition to shreds. He's won two comps. He's won origin series, one with Australia. But like, if they really want to win the comp at South Sydney and he's going to be the fullback and he's got his boy, Jack Wyden, he's still playing with Cody. He's still got his boys around him. I think this has to be Latrell's season. He's going to be goal kicking. He's ready to go fit and firing. He's, you know, ready making jokes about Allegiant Stadium, Trellegiant Stadium. Uh, He's definitely someone on my radar because if he, if he can goal kick and if he can be more active in attack this season, yeah, why wouldn't you have him in your squad? That's my sort of thing. I'm just lucky I've got Tom Trebojevic, who I think is also in for a big season. So I don't want to worry well, about I'm Trell. Gonna, I'm going to ask you a question. I was going to ask you. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably the fans will be thinking, why Why don't you already have him? The Trell? Yeah. I'm just cautious. I don't know how well South... I don't know how long it'll take for South to get their attack right. So Whereas defensively, a fullback's not going to get you points. So you're saying you want to wait for, in, for your squad. You want to wait on Latrell Mitchell. Well, that's why he's on the radar for me. I've yeah. got to wait four weeks. Yeah. Okay. I've got to see how he performs in the first four weeks. I want to see how the back line works together. Yeah. Is Latrell getting early ball? Are they using him as a decoy runner? Like yeah. what? Also, a few injuries in that Rabbitohs lineup. Yeah, the back line is, so, is a bit um, tattered. So um, we don't really know how the, he's going to perform until they all come back. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. definitely on the radar. Another one on the radar is Harry Grant. He's been given the captaincy at Melbourne. Um, I think that's just going to improve his game in general. Just the just the confidence he has. Obviously, I, I genuinely think he's the best hooker in the comp, oh, whether yeah. it's fantasy related or not. No I think doubt. he's genuinely the best hooker in the comp. Yeah. Um, 
So just to see how that impacts his game, whether he takes more responsibility from like a, like it's, you know, as hooker, it's like, look, I'm talking like I played 300 first games. My name's not Cameron Smith, but <laughs> you sort of, you do decide, obviously your halves will be calling the shots and your captain and coach will be advising you. But when the ball is played and there's, um, you know, 30,000 people in the crowd screaming, it's up to you where the ball goes, yeah. left, right, or you're going straight down the middle. What are you doing? Right. I think Harry's got the more confidence to continue making decisions on his own and do whatever he sees now that he's got the captaincy. Yeah. So I think it'll really spark his attacking game. So he already gets the points defensively. Yeah, not, but, only, yeah, not only that, he's, his errors are limited as well. Oh, his errors are limited. He's, yeah. he's, he's Bellamy's dream player, yeah. really. It's probably why Bellamy is still at the club. Yeah, <laughs> that, let's be real. He's nah, keeping Bellamy alive. He, uh, yeah, as, as a, I agree with you, best hooker in the game. His instinct in the game in the moment is unbelievable. And, yeah. and every player follows him as well, which is another That's right. key thing. So. And now with Pappenhausen back, I want to see how he links up like as a spine in general, how he links up with the fullback mm. um, of certain players because that could impact his try assists and line break assists, I'm, I'm assuming. So I yeah. want to keep him on the radar for now. So people say like how Melbourne stay in the top top eight, how they stay in top four. Look at the spine. And I think Harry Grant is probably the, I wouldn't say main reason, but he's up there for one of the reasons. Yeah. Yeah, the definitely. Hook, the hooker, everyone says, you know, the halfback, the fullback, key players, but the hooker touches the ball the most. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite a simple. fact. It's quite simple. So the players, the teams that are, the squads that are struggling right now, are teams who the squads that don't have uh, hookers. Yeah, that's right. Genuine hookers. I'm saying. So like, that's that's a great uh great find. Great radar. Great radar there. Let us know who you guys have your eyes on too. Well, I'll let you know who I have. Yeah. I'm going Lukey from Cowboys. You know, you know like, Lukey. So last year uh, he obviously had the the injury, came back and he's played pretty well, not not too bad. So in the trial he looked very strong, was very dangerous, he hard to tackle, his offloads were there, and I don't have him at the moment. But yeah, I want to see how it goes. You know, with Luciano leaving, and then they have Nanai as well. So which which side he plays on, he's going to definitely. Yeah, they've play got on. another young gun coming through another as young well. Gun. Yeah, everyone wants to play. He wants him to play as well. So Luke is a big body man. He's a he's a big boy and he's young. Yeah, and we know that that Cowboys pack isn't the youngest. So a player like him is going to be up there because they want to keep him. Yeah, you're right. So, they've got young back rowers, and then their <laughs> their their props and lock are just aging. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. So the, in terms of impacts, he'd want to see the ball. Him and then I want to see the ball a lot. Yeah. So, but in terms of if he's going to perform, I need to wait. Just to wait a few like you're waiting on the troll. Yeah. I need to wait maybe three or four weeks. You need to wait to see if he's going to play 80 every week too, yeah, right? For, yeah, correct. Yeah. For sure. Okay. So, um, but the, the the talks and raps on him and the, the way I saw in the trial match, he just looks like a player to have. Even his before. first few games a couple of years back, like the way he was breaking the line – it was sure. so effortless. And the way he was running down the field, it's like, mate, kind of like this guy's going to break tackles, line break. Like, yeah, so I had to relate to a player. It's kind of like Sean Lane. Yeah. Same body. Sean Lane. And as agile as Bryce Cartwright and another yeah. Eels back rower. Yeah. It's, it's, they're very dangerous to have a player like it that. sounds like a kid. I would say even like a player like Preston, but just a bit, obviously big, bigger in size. Uh, yeah. And could just run that perfect line and just be consistent. I was thinking about Preston this season. Preston's an absolute gun. And obviously, plays for the best club. Here we go. Next, <laughs> next, next. But, okay, into my next player. I think this is no shock. Everyone's probably thinking about it. Roger Tuas Shek. He was incredible on the weekend. Oh, I know we're talking about it saying, oh, you reckon they're going to play him a fullback for the game? Yeah. And they played him in center. I'm like, oh, but still, his impact. He did switch to a fullback role like in the late 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. And oh, wow. That, that just. Turn back the clock. As a Roosters fan, you you probably were thinking, wow, like yeah, we need this, we need this at our club. <laughs> uh, it, look, I'm just grateful we won that comp with us on the wing in 2013. But I, I know, obviously, following him from 10 years back yeah. when he was at the club when he debuted, like he's a freak. But you don't see people go to Union. Yeah, and I know it's it's your play on the radar, so I'll let you go. But who do you see go to Union apart from Sonny Bill? Yeah, come back and still kill it. Yeah, no yeah. one, no one. And the way he just slaughtered back into the game. Man. So easily, and especially with a playing alongside a player like Sean Johnson, who they have such a good connection. They have such a good connection together, the chemistry. We saw them link up in one play. It wasn't the greatest play, but it was just the fact that it was just them. And that <laughs> happens in preseason. <laughs> like, uh oh, yeah. And we're seeing K coming back. When yeah, puts me. This is why he's in my radar. He's not in my squad right now. So yeah. we're obviously seeing K's in the start fullback. 
But we, I'll, what I want to see for my squad is if he's going to play a roaming center position. Like a Joey Manu? Yeah. Like a Joey okay. Manu, like, how can we explain? Like, like, uh, like Jovojevic in for the Blues. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like that. So uh, if, when he's fit, when he's fit, touch wood. So, uh, yeah, I want to see that from RCG. Obviously, as in general, just being on the field, I feel like he's going to be making, obviously, that step is just a, with yeah. the weapon, he's going to be breaking tackles. It's off, us a step. His offload, his pace. He's, he's insane. Especially being on the inside, Montoya, who was the leading try scorer. Oh, no, sorry, Dallin was leading try scorer. His second leading second. try scorer at the Warriors. For the Wars. Which they're scoring a bunch of tries, which is another they're gonna, effort. They're going to make the top four. Yeah, I think we were talking about this the other day. Gonna, we were like, make why did we not put them in our top four? And then it's like, you look at their team and experience. We've got to revise our eight <laughs> after the second week. No, but for sure... By the end of the season, Roger Chabazashek will be in my squad. And I'm pretty confident on that because, yeah, he's just going to be... Well, are you hoping to pack him or he's, yeah, he's not going to be cheap? He's not cheap. So, yeah, I'm just hoping for a pack. Maybe I've got a center pack coming up. So. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll open up our pack soon to, to wrap up the app. But um, just before we get into it, we have a, a, a transfer market segment where we speak about who we purchase off the market for our squad to improve yeah. our squad. So without going into too much detail because no rugby league games have been played yet yep. in the uh in the season, um, I'm just gonna go out there and say I'm short on backs, not full backs, but the center wing position. And Jermaine Asako for me, he'll be goal kicking. He could be top point score at the end of the season again. He'll be scoring most of the tries mm -hmm. apart from the hammer for the Finns. So I think Sarko will score enough points for me. And he's not afraid to run the ball, make meters. 100%. So I think he'd be worth it for me. I think also having Avalura on the inside of him. Oh, Jake a Avalura. Ball, a ball player ball like player. Jake. Yeah. Just boosts him, get his game up. Like it'll, it'll take time, but yeah. definitely someone on the market that I want to look at. Yeah, for sure. If oh, I backed that one. I don't know why I didn't think about that one. Yeah, who's yours? I've gone for the, the same as you, the center position, center back. I've gone Ruben Garrick. He's, yeah, playing, okay. he's shifted into the centers. Not sure where he's going to be, which side he's going to be on, which is actually very important for this Manly side. Yeah. And very important for this week because we know that Rabideau's a bit short on their Rabideau's short right on the edge, right? The right edge. So, you know, if Garrick is on the opposite, opposite side of their right edge, uh, there's points leaking there. So um, There are. So Garrick, goal kick, of goal course. Kick, yeah. Of course, unless uh, Brooksy takes over, which is another thing we don't know. Uh, yeah. So... He's on my list, obviously. He's only a transfer market radar. Yeah, he the, crosses over both cross, segments. It's a crossover. <laughs> but yeah, a player, obviously, another strong player who could break break tackles, who can, you know, make those crucial runs. Yeah. yeah meat eater, really. So He is. Um, and he's solid. Yeah, definitely on my top of my list. Okay. Top five. So, yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll, we'll get into the pack opening. Yeah, let's get into the pack um, opening. We'll and, see how we should do this. Let's do this. All right. So we're not, we're not opening anything special. We'll save that for another video. It's just our, our packs for jumping on, on game day squad this week. Um, yep. So, so should we get uh, We'll just open one pack yeah, each. Let's get it up. I'll go. I'll start off mine. The center yep. position. So we've got a couple packs. We'll open one each. Yep. I'll start it off. And here it goes. Bang. I've got Simonson. Patty Simonson. Simonson from Eels. Probably one of the shining lights for their back line. A player that couldn't really crack in at Canberra and he's come to Parramatta and he's, he's played pretty well. He obviously had that injury. Yeah. And I mean, a great addition to my squad as a backup as well. Definitely a good backup, but mate, no one to, to start. Um, I'll go into my second pack. Yeah. Go into your second pack. I'm just loading I've a, mine. I've got a fullback, fullback pack here. So in terms of who I want right now, I have Latrell Mitchell in my squad and I probably want, you know, not to steal your player. Probably a, 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 Tom, a Tommy Javoy, which would be nice. Uh, and yep. yeah, let's see if I can actually grab him. I don't got Jan Campbell, which is a, a nice, a nice backup fullback. It's a nice backup because when Titans have a real attacking game where they got a slightly easier opponent where we think that yeah. will explode, and we know that's your man. We know he's playing fullback with Brimson playing in the centers now. Yeah, so it's a, it's a. Oh. JC's handy. It's a, it's a great find. I mean, All right, let's get into my pack opening. I will go with, I've got two edge packs and one mid. So I may as well go for one of each. Yeah, go for it. Edge player. Oh, oh that's a great Oh, one. yes, I've been waiting for this. I've got Nikara from the Sharks. He'll be playing next to Hines again. Yep. Uh, all Thanks. I see is line break, line break, <laughs> line break, line break. And tries. <laughs> Hopefully. 
No, that, oh, that's, that's actually that's awesome. Great pickup. I'm going to I'm gonna open the edge pack now. Here we go. Super keen for that. It's a Rabbitohs player, Jacob Post. He's starting. He is starting. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Would not you? someone I'll put in my squad. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Definitely not. But because I got someone so good in the first pack, I'm going to open a third. Yeah, go for it, man. I'm going to go for it. It's yeah. another mid. Surely we have some good luck here again. Who we got? Francis Molo, probably. Okay, look. Anytime I get a Bulldogs player, we don't talk about it. <laughs> but that's the beauty of Game Day Squad. You never know you're going to get. Always open your packs and have a look because you like. Well, just, I just got Nicker out of nowhere. Like yeah. That's a highlight. Like well, My week's done. Well, I just so I have another pack here. Oh, go for it, Josh. Might be the, the shining light to my week. I hope so for your case. It's a Melbourne Harry player. Harry Grant. All my days. As we've spoken about him, Harry Grant into my squad. Josh, we might need to do a swap. <laughs> I'll give you any doggies player you want. I need Harry. <laughs> oh, man, he's starting in my squad. So he's on my radar and he's in your squad. So <laughs> that will surely wrap up the episode. Um, <laughs> that's, that's that. I love that. That's damn. a great addition to my squad. Well, we'll let you guys enjoy Vegas, the, the first two matches. We, uh, before, we won't give... Before we let them yeah. go, want to get into our prediction for the week? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'll, so I think I mentioned it before. Uh, Rabbitohs look a bit short on their right side. Yep. And Manly obviously have a, a pacey outside back group there at their, uh, in their hands. And like I said, they have Garrick and... Remind me on the right edge, Manly. Uh Gary Kula, uh, Jackson Paulo on the wing. Jackson Paulo. Yeah. I'm going to call for three or four tries coming on that edge. Jeez. And I'm going to say Jackson Paulo to grab, you know, two tries and probably score above 20 points. Okay. And uh, it's obviously a Jackson Paulo's not a player I have in my squad. But just for this game, we got to look out for that right edge of Manly attacking. Yeah, attacking Rabbitohs. That's, right. my prediction. That's my prediction. Well, I've, I obviously want Teddy to bounce back. I'm, I'm saying Latrell's on my radar. Everyone talks about Reese Walsh and how good he is. But I'm actually saying my fullback in my game day score, Tom Trebojevic, will be the top scoring fullback out of the, the Vegas matches. So yeah. we've got two matches, but four fullbacks. I think it'll be the highest scoring. So that's my prediction there. We might do some sort of forfeit or some challenge yeah. next episode. But um, we want you guys to stay tuned. You can watch this on YouTube, on Spotify. Make sure you subscribe to Game Day Squad. Check out our page at Sportshed TV as well. Please, on the Discord, the comment section, put in all your questions, send them in, and we'd, uh, we'd love to go through it in the next episode. Well, thank you for tuning in for the Rugby League game day show. Yep, and we'll be, we'll be back next week. Obviously, like we said, two games of footy, but we'll be back next week and we can kind of preview the rest of the games because we'll have the team lists and everything as well. So the Game Day Squad Rugby League show will be a staple every single week of the, the Rugby League season. So stay tuned and any closing words? Have a great week. Enjoy it. See ya.